All right, watch what you say, everybody. The recording has started. Uh, let's see, we'll give people like one more minute to show up. Um, then we'll jump in. Anybody have any uh, questions that they want to ask within the first minute that I may be able to answer? I mean, probably won't be any super deep question, but anybody got anything while we wait one minute for the late people? Not that we should always wait for the late people, but you know, people are like, oh shoot, it's 12 o'clock already. All good. All right, all right. I hear one last person trying to jump in. All right, well, let's get the party started then since the recording is going. And welcome back to some more Unreal. Let me share my screen. There we go. Like I said, it was nice to see some of you doing some fun projects so far. Like, and again, it's, um, you know, this is the kind of software that you want to layer on little by little. And we're not, by the end of today, we're gonna to do a little bit more. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to do, you know, a, a little short film with some different characters and some different animation. There is always more to learn for sure. The goal for us though, is just to, just to learn these little bit of details, layer on a little bit more information, a little bit more information. If we try to do everything at once, you're just gonna get overwhelmed and be like, oh, this is no fun. But if we do just a little bit at a time, it keeps it fun. So we're just going to do a little bit more so that it remains fun. Let's go ahead. Um, if you have your um, previous session open, um, just this third party template, we're going to use that again. It looks like from the uh, feedback during the week that some of your machines don't like some of the environments that uh, are available for Unreal, which, which is fine. Um, in the sense of there are less heavy ones that may not kill your machine. Um, and, and you'll find what I do as well is if something is not working, I'll try something else. It's, you know, we, we don't have to do the broken down city. You can do maybe a field with hardly anything in it. That'll work. You know, whatever your machine will handle, it's fine. And we'll even just for now say, let's work in this third party template again. If you don't have this scene handy, Remember, it's not that long. If you want to just create a fresh one, maybe you have some stuff in here and you just want to do a fresh start. I'll, I'll do that as well. I'll make a bet in a class two project. So I'm going to go to file, make a brand new project. And again, I'm going to use the games just because it has those characters and there's a set in there already. I'm not going to use the characters, but I do like there's some things. There's an environment already there. So I'm going to just do games again. I'm going to do third person again. And while I'm here, do I need starter content? Uh, sure. Starter content, we didn't do this last time, but um, I'll show you what this is. Uh, with starter content, there's with or without. So what this is, it's just like a kit of props that, that exist that you can use. And it's another starting point of assets. There's like some chairs and some tables. I can't remember if we used that before, but if we didn't, here's with starter content, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. Then you, I'll call this uh, Fetna class two. So we have, so we're all starting from the same point potentially, unless you have yours already open, that's fine too. I'm gonna create a new project. I don't need to save what I did before, so I'm gonna say don't save. It's gonna take a minute to uh, relaunch and remake that new project. Just a second. But that way you can all see in case you forgot, how did we make a new project? I'll also show, because it came up in the chat, if you need to add content such as that, where you can do that as well. So here is, this is where we started last week, new third person project, except this time we have a folder for starter content. And let's say you had a scene 
maybe you opened a project that you open a new, you downloaded a new project from unreal and maybe it's a city but you don't have these third person mannequins in there and you want to get them in there so anytime you want to add some of those built in they call them content packs as well as say starter content you can go to the add import button and at the top here it says add a feature or content pack and the feature means in this case the third person kit so that everything you see back here is you can bring in if, if you don't already have it by clicking this or you can go to the content pack tab and this is where you can get the starter content if you already have a project and you want to add the starter content i've already added it which is why there's a folder here that says starter content but if you didn't have this in your scene you want to add it you can just do it this way you don't have to go through the marketplace for these these are kind of kind of built in as well it's just what i want to show there Okay, let's so uh, a lot of you did some work with the mannequins and that's perfect. That's what that's all we wanted to do is just have your mannequins do some kind of animation so you get familiar with how to animate something and it, mannequins are already there so it's easy. So this time we're going to add this is where it gets kind of fun. We're going to add new characters to your project and we're going to add new potential animation. I got to show you the right way to do it. Um, because there's a, a wrong way and I want to show you the right way. So we are going to go to a website called Mixamo. So open your browser. Hopefully you all got Mr. Ortho, oh, not uh, Leon. Wow. Wow. That's funny. Have you used that last name a long time? How long ago? Um, it'll, it'll be forever at Ortho in my head, but Mr. Leon's email uh, that talked about going to Mixamo.com. Mixmo.com. I think I showed it a little bit last week. This is where you're going to find your characters for your shorts. If you want, you can use the mannequin for the rest of your life. But you know, why use a mannequin when you've got Exo Gray available or Remy or what I want us to do, just so we're all doing the same thing for now. You can do whatever you want after class and play with other stuff. But for this class, we're all going to do the exact same thing. So there's no crazy variables. Going on, we are going to pick Douglas from the list of characters in Mixamo. So go to Mixamo.com. If you need an account, they're free. You can sign up, hopefully, really quick. You just go give it a username and password, and then you get an account. So it's kind of from Adobe, same as Photoshop people. And what you want to do here is pick your character. So we're going to pick Douglas. Douglas should be in a what's called a T pose. So a T pose is important for when you're animating characters that they they have a common starting point, right? So uh, the character is here now. If you've already been playing around in Mixamo a little bit, which is fine, I got to show us how to reset something. Oh, you know, can I do that here? Uh, no. Okay. Skip. Um, so say you've been in here and you're like, okay, I got my character. I'm going to go to animations and I'm going to click on, I want Douglas to be doing this capoeira dance, right? So you pick a character, then you pick an animation. That's great. You've been exploring, but we don't want to start here. We want to start with our character in the T pose because this is a two part process. The first thing we're going to do is export the character in T pose. Then we're going to, export as many animations as we want. It's kind of two parts. Remember in our mannequins, when we dragged in the mannequin, we already have a mannequin in T-Pose. So that's what we need before we deal with the animation. So what if though you go back to the characters tab and Douglas is still doing his capoeira dance. So actually, I guess it's a martial arts move or something. So how do you reset your character to go back to T-Pose? Unless somebody knows even a better secret, the way I do it is I hold shift on the keyboard. So this is important. You'll probably have to do this again in the future. So hold shift on the keyboard and then go up to your browser and hit the reload button. So up at the up at the top of your browser, you hit shift and then reload. That reloads the web page to get rid of any of the animation that you had on them. And then it'll have Douglas in T-Pose again. There he is takes a second for the materials to apply to the character. There we go. So it's coming, it's coming. 
So he's almost there. He looks, oh, for a moment there, he looked like the guy from Terminator 2. All right, so there's Douglas. We are going to export Douglas. We're going to download Douglas. And then we're going to import him into our game or into our project. So to download Douglas in T Pose, all you need to do is hit the big download button. All right, so you got Douglas, hit download. And it's asking you, how do you want to download, uh, download Douglas? You'll see this every time you download, it's going to have a little pop up. In our case, we want, yes, FBX binary. So we want, we want the default that shows up here. You want FBX binary. And the only option at the moment, well, I guess there's an original, but we want T pose. So you want T pose. So the defaults that popped up for Douglas are perfect. And then just hit download. And that will download this character with all his textures, meaning with all the colors and the character. All right, so that's currently downloading. And now I want to bring in Douglas into Unreal. So there's a, a couple things we got to do for that. I'm going to show this in the folder. Where'd it go? Hiding over here. Move that. All right. So I'm just showing. So here's Douglas. I have a one because I did Douglas before. Um, so Douglas one, here he is in my file system. So I downloaded Douglas, so I'm good as far as downloads. Now back to Unreal. We need to import Douglas into our project. And let's, uh, one of the things that with Unreal, you can get really messy really quick. So we want to make sure we do this nice and clean to stay nice and organized because it's a good idea to keep everything organized. So I'm going to go to the content folder up at the top here. And I'm going to make a folder called Mixamo in here. So I'm going to right click, go to new folder and call it Mixamo. These are where, this is where I'm going to put all my Mixamo stuff. I may end up I may end up doing multiple characters, you know, probably you probably want more than just one character in your short. Uh, so I'm going to go into this Mixamo folder, double click to go in there. And I want to make another folder here for Douglas. I'm going to keep all the Douglas stuff together. So I'm going to right click. I'm in the Mixamo folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it Douglas. And then I'm going to double click to go in there. So all I've done in Unreal so far is made a couple folders. Now, there's two ways you can bring in what you downloaded into here. You can drag and drop by, where's my file browser? So here's Douglas. I can just drag that into here. That's one way. And that, that's actually a fine way. It works great. But just to show you another way like say you don't say you don't have this handy um and you don't want to go find it you could also just uh go to this green button here that says add import and import to this folder so import an asset and it's going to pop up in a browser and then you got to go find it which for me was in my S drive downloads, I think. So for me, this is a little less convenient. It was easier to just drag it from the folder that was already open. Okay, there is Douglas. So I have a, I have a Douglas I did earlier this morning just to test this, make sure it worked fine. Um, so th these are both the exact same Douglas. I'm going to use the one without the uh, extra one there because they're the same thing. Look, they're the exact same size. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna hit open. 
So this is an important step when you're, this will change whether you're using T-Pose Douglas, like what we're doing now, or the animations for Douglas. So there's two, remember this is a two part process. This is part one. So here's an important uh, detail here. So this is asking you, you're importing Douglas into your project. And these are all the different settings. Most important one you want to be aware of is what skeleton do you want Douglas to use? You want him to use his own skeleton, meaning you don't want you don't want to use the mannequin skeleton. You want Douglas to come in with his own skeleton because that was exported. So if you happen to pick this, maybe you're really fast and you're like, I want the mannequin. It's like, oh no, you you actually don't want the mannequin. What you do to clear this back out is you click on it again and say clear. You want no, this doesn't mean don't import a skeleton. It means don't assign it to any other skeleton. You want it to bring its own skeleton. I know it's slightly confusing, but believe me, by saying none, you're bringing in Douglas's own skeleton. You're not assigning it to a skeleton that's already in Unreal. We'll do that eventually. So you want Douglas to bring in his own skeleton, so you leave that at none. There is no animation. He's just standing at a T, so that's fine. Everything else, you can leave it as is and hit import all. That will start bringing in Douglas. Is anybody stuck at this point? Because this is kind of a key point. Uh, you'll, you'll see this error. You can close this. That's fine. Ignore all that, just ignore that. By bringing in that one file, look at all this stuff that came in. We have Douglas himself. We have a bunch of textures for Douglas. We have a bunch of materials for Douglas. It's gonna say it's compiling shaders, which is kind of related to the surface of the character. So we'll give that a second to do that. Everybody doing okay while we're waiting for that? So was there a reason behind why we chose import all versus import? Uh, we could have chosen import. There's a, we only had one thing. There's you can you can bring in multiple. So you could have like ten animations. You might want to bring them all in with the same settings. In that case, you could do import all. So good catch import would have done the exact same thing because we were only importing one object i usually use import all just to, out of habit because if i'm importing multiple stuff i want it all to come in but you are correct either button would have worked uh 33 shaders to compile it's almost done we don't need to wait for it it just helps you uh preview all these things so there's a unique thing. So when we use Mixamo and bring it in, it tries its best to rebuild Douglas in Unreal as best as it can, but it's making some guesses and it guessed wrong. So we need, I need to show you how to fix what it did wrong before we deal with the animation stuff. So in this Douglas folder, it, it brought in a bunch of stuff. The one we care about the most at the moment is this one here with pink that just says Douglas skeletal mesh. That means, remember, don't watch for a moment. Don't do what I do because you might get lost. So uh, keep your eyes on my screen. Don't click anywhere. Remember when we went to the mannequin folder, went to characters, went to mesh, we had this here. See, it's pink. And if I hover over it, it says the skeletal mesh. So it's just the shape of the character. There's also a skeleton for the character, right? So you got the shape of the character and you got its skeleton. So now let me go back to Douglas. Here we have Douglas, the shape of the character. Somewhere around here, there's Douglas, the skeleton. So same idea as what we got with the, um, the mannequin. So what we wanna do is bring Douglas, the skeletal mesh, the one with the pink, the little pink there, bring Douglas, into your scene. This is a lot like what we did last week with the mannequin. Right, so I'm going to bring Douglas into the scene. I'm going to zoom into Douglas. Where do you go? You can hit F if you remember. Zoom into Douglas and he looks 
kind of creepy, right? Like, whoa, he looks like a zombie. And, and things are things are weird, right? Like, why can I see his tongue from the back of his head? Why can I see his eyes from the back of his head? Why do I see his teeth through the back of his head? And why do I see his shirt when I go and look from the top? Why do I see his shirt through his head? So things are weird and we need to fix it. Wow, look, he's even has a, look, he has little blood vessels in his eyeballs. That's kind of cool. That's good detail. But it's creepy detail when we don't need to see the blood in his eyeballs through the side of his head. So we need to fix what Unreal did to poor Douglas when it imported him. And it's an easy fix. It's going to require us going into a little bit more advanced stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. Just follow along. We'll fix Douglas and he'll look back to normal in a minute. So we brought Douglas into our scene. We did that the same way as we did the mannequin. If you look at, if you have, make sure Douglas is selected and look at your details tab here. If you go down in the details, you'll see there's our skeletal mesh, Douglas, and then you have this section here called materials. So materials, think of it kind of like material fabric, right? So his shirt is a material, but really what a material is, it defines the surface. He's not just gray, like these out here, just gray blobs. He actually has a surface and those surfaces are using a image called a texture to look like what they look like. Like his uniform is based from a 2D image put onto the character. We don't need to know how all that works, but what we do need to know is the way we fix this, it's a material problem is where it guessed wrong. So let's first fix his um, head. There's four materials, four materials assigned to our character, right? We have material, it says element, but that means there's four materials here. There's a body material, a shoe material, a top material, which we can guess means the top of his uniform, and then the bottom of the bottom material. These are just names that somebody named it. Um, and so let's first fix his body material. So this is the part that's his hands, his face, his, his body, like your body, not your clothes. Double click this icon to open the controls for the material. So just double click that little round thing there. And it opens up this new scary looking editor and you're like, whoa, what is all this stuff? And what are all these noodles connecting here? We don't need to know at all what, what this does for now. We're, we're just gonna fix what's wrong, right? So I'm just clicking and dragging these connections. You know, uh, this, we have all these images that are feeding what this looks like. So that's that's what's going on here, but let's just fix it and then back away with it fixed. So the problem, what, why he is see-through is down here, select, you wanna select this node here that says body mat. If you show this parent, your, your parents this, like tonight, they're gonna be so impressed. They're gonna be like, what? What are you doing with material? So this is, this is good stuff, but we don't have to do that much. So you wanna select this node right here that says body mat. If you select that node, look down here in the details. Now, the reason this is important, you might say like, why do we have to do this? You want to use these Mixamo characters all the time because they're fun and they're easy, but it's likely you're going to have to do this to other characters. So that's why I'm showing you this. Notice here in the details that there is this option here that says blend mode translucent. Translucent means see-through. That is why his head is see-through is because Unreal guessed wrong when it imported that the material should be translucent. We don't want it to be see-through. You wanna click on that and you wanna choose the word opaque. Opaque means solid. We don't want it see-through, we want opaque. Like milk, milk versus water. Unless it's non-fat milk, then that's a little see-through. So you want opaque. All right, it's gonna think again and then it's gonna come back all nice and solid a second so it's resetting all the preview here okay there it is now it's nice and solid that's all you got to do and then hit save in the upper corner so you're saving the changes that you made to this material just hit save it's 
going to save. Then you can close this window and we're going to do that three more times to fix Douglas. Right, but now look at look at that. That's much better. I can't see I can't see through his head anymore. Right? That's looking much better. But that's just his skin. His uh, uniform is still a mess. His shoes are probably still see-through because they have the same settings. So now we're going to go to the next sphere there, the shoe material. Double click the icon for that sphere. Double click. It opens exact same thing. You don't, don't move. You don't, you don't have to move these around like I did. I was just bored moving them around, right? You don't. All you got to do is pick shoe mat, the name of the material, switch it from translucent to opaque and save. I wish we didn't have to do this because it does get a little complex, but now you'll know how to fix any of your characters that come in see-through because you don't want see-through characters. All right, after it saves, close it. Go to the next one, double click. Pick the top mat, pick this big long one. And, and all these, it's gonna be the big long one. So select the big long one, change the blend node, blend mode to opaque and save. The good thing is we're recording this. So if you forget how to do this in the future, you can just watch the video. And one more to do, the last button here, double click. Select the big long one, change it to opaque and save. So all we're doing is fixing his material so he's not see-through because see-through looks weird. And it's saving. All right, now we have a Douglas that looks much better. Uh, his skin and uniform are a little dark in this default setup I have. So I'm going to add a little more light to the scene. I don't know if we added lights last time, but it's fine. It's easy enough to add a light. I'm going to go to the Place Actors tab. I'm going to go to Lights. You have four, kind of five, but these are more easy to understand lights. A point light, I think is the easiest to use in a way. It's just like a, a candle or a, a light bulb. That's the icon, like a light bulb. So I'm gonna drag it into my scene. Put it, put it near our character. Now I can see him just a little bit better. If you get too close, he's a little too bright. So I'm just putting this here so I can see my character a little better. If I want, I can put it farther away and then just make the light brighter by looking when remember if you select your light and look in the details there's an intensity value how much brightness do you want this light to have i'm going to increase it add a lot of light in the scene i'm going to have douglas move around i don't want him to move away from the light too much all right part one of getting a mixamo character in is done. Now we got to do part two. Right now he's just he's just static, just like when we brought in female mannequin. So we're in the same place. We just brought in Douglas, which is good. You got to do this before you bring in the animation. Now comes the fun part. How do we go back to Mixamo and bring in some animation to add to our character? Like I said, this is the part where it gets really fun and your creativity can just go nuts in what you're going to do with it. So I'm going to go back to Mixamo. Actually, while I'm here, I'll save my project just for kicks. Save all. Just saving everything. You may or may not have noticed there were a bunch of little asterisks here. You can jump back in the video if you want while you're watching. Notice that when you bring something in to import it, to save it into your project, you have to save your project, then all the little asterisks go away. So we've saved what we've done. Let's go back to Mixamo. So 
So now we've imported a T pose Douglas. Now what we're going to do back in Mixmo is we're going to go get some animation for Douglas. So let's go now to the animation tab in Mixamo. And there are lots of animations you could choose. I'll choose do, 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 what do I want to. Um, I don't know. Well, in this case, we should probably all pick the same thing, right? Um, there was, I'm looking for, there's a silly uh, hip hop dance that I was going to grab just for fun. Um, well, here's how to show the feature. Uh, if, you, if you know the name of something you want to look for, you can search in here. I know there's one called hip hop dance. So I'm going to type hip and enter and it'll filter out my animation. There is, there's some hip, hip hop dancing going on. So let's see. There we go. There's a few different ones, right? So I kind of like this one. I think I think Douglas would look great doing this dance. So I'm going to click on that. And it will update. Look at him go. So Douglas is doing the hip hop dance. If you don't like that one in the future, you know, you can flip over to another one. So he's doing some other fancy dance there. I don't have these moves myself, so it's nice to, you know, virtually have some dance moves going on. Uh, I kind of like this one, actually. I'm going to stick with this one. He's got, he's got some good moves going on. So I want Douglas to do this motion. If I look at all my settings here, uh, I'm going to go with the defaults, meaning whatever he's doing is fine. But if you want your character to do something a little bit different, you have controls um, like, like say overdrive. Say I want him to make his arms go super crazy. You can drag this overdrive value super high. I think of it like his energy, right? Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to see the difference. It's very subtle, but it'll, you know, move, he's already moving kind of crazy anyway. Um, but things like character arm space, I can drag that up super high. Let's see what his arms do now. Uh, oh, so now his arms are higher than they were before. It looks now like he's doing some kind of zombie dance. Um, so you can, you can adjust all these kind of things you want uh, before you output your character. He's actually a little complex for you. I, I'm going to go back to the, this plain old hip hop dance. There, I, I think it looks a little more funny there. So we're, we're gonna have him do that one. So now what do we do? If you, we'll just stick with the defaults, but know that you can make adjustments if you want. We, we like them like this. So I'm going to download Douglas doing this dance. And there's some important settings we gotta do. So hit download. We want FBX. We want 30 frames a second. We want this set to none. What we don't need is his skin. You may be like, wait, what? We already downloaded him with his skin in T-Pose. So his skeleton and his skin, it's already in Unreal. All we need from this is the motion. We don't need the skin. We need the, the, the data of the motion. The skin would just be wasted. We don't, we don't need his skin. I know it sounds weird, but we just need the, the move. We just need the moves, not the skin to come with the moves. So if you choose without skin, that's just going to be the animation data, like how much to move an elbow, how much to move a shoulder. It's not going to bring the shoulder or the elbow. It's just the information. So that's this will save us a lot of space in our computer. So we just want the moves without skin and download. So it's downloading here. We got a hip hop dance downloaded. And I want to go ahead and show this in, in my browser. It just lets me pop it up here. So there's hip hop dance one. Yours probably won't have a one after it because again, I did this earlier too. I'm going to minimize Mixmo. And again, for I, I could, but don't. I could just drag this into here and throw it in with all the other junk that's in here. 
But again, I kind of want to keep things as orderly as possible. So before I do that, I'm going to make a folder in the Douglas folder here. I'm just going to make another folder and call it, call it uh, animations. Just for organization so that any and all my Douglas animations are in a folder called animations. I'm going to go in there so it's a nice empty folder here. Then I'm going to drag that downloaded FBX file. I'm going to drag it into the animations folder. This time, this is really kind of the only thing we have to do. The only important part to understand here, notice it won't let me do anything here on import because all that we are importing is some animation data. But now this time where it says, what skeleton do you want this data be, to be applied to? We want it to work with the Douglas skeleton. So we want the animation data, how much to move the shoulders, the arms and everything. Where, where do we assign that information? What's, the, what's that animation for? And it is for Douglas. So you wanna choose the Douglas skeleton that's where you're assigning this information. And then import. Or import all if you did multiple ones, but you can also just hit import. Now we're getting into familiar territory. Now we're kind of going back to what we did last week. Let me show you what we need to do. Well, you know what? Before we do that, Let's bring, let's, while we're in a download mode, let's go get a couple more motions for Douglas. So I'm gonna go back to Mixamo. And maybe we should also do, we'll do a simple walk. So I'm gonna look for the different walk animations. There's walk in a circle, if you want them to walk around, there's walk, I actually just want a normal walk. It's not very normal for Douglas. It's kind of not a very, there's a, a dwarf walk. Let's make Douglas walk like a dwarf, I guess. So we'll pick dwarf walk for Douglas. I'm glad I picked this one because here's an important setting and, and a little bit to understand. And it, it relates to last week as well. You guys are going to be able to make such cool stuff with this information. Notice that. Douglas is walking, but he's he's walking away and then coming back, walking away and coming back. If you were to do what we did last week, where you're going to stretch him out, say you want him to walk across a long distance for, and, and to repeat the walk again and again. Currently, he's going to walk and pop back, walk and pop back, walk and pop back, which is hard to work with because you can't, if you were to stretch that out in the sequencer like last week, He's just going to keep jumping back and forth. We want his animation to be what's called in place. So you want to check the box for in place. What this will do is that makes him walk in place. He's not, he's not going forward. You'll have to animate him moving forward in Unreal, which is actually fine. You have more control that way. You don't want him walking forward in his own cycle. So you want the you want it to be in place. All right, how are we doing on time? Oh, perfect. Ooh, barely perfect. We'll just, we'll do this. The idea will be the same, but I'm glad we did this because if you see your character moving, you want to make sure that the, there's an in place option, especially if you're going to use that cycle for a long period of time, you need it to be in place. So I'm going to download this same procedure. It remembered what I had before without skin. I don't need the skin because it's just the animation data. And download. And while I'm here downloading that, I'm going to get one more. I'm going to do the sneak walk. I'm also going to make sure I set it to in place. That is a sneaky walk, isn't it? All right, I'm going to download that. So I'll download a couple while I'm here. So download without skin, all the same settings. So 
So I have a sneak walk downloaded, a dwarf walk downloaded. I'm going to show this in the folder. I'm going to sort by date. And there's my sneak walk, there's my dwarf walk. Let's minimize Mixmo. I'm going to, so this will be a good uh, whoever asked import all versus import. This is a case where I'm going to import two at the same time. You can import, you can download while you're downloading stuff. You can download 50 if you want. Um, so I'm going to bring both of these animations now into the same folder. I want to target, I want to send this information to the Douglas skeleton or have it available. What it means is this in animation data applies to the Douglas skeleton, not in this case, the mannequin. It doesn't, it doesn't work for the mannequin. It only works for Douglas. It gives you the option of the mannequin because it doesn't know if it's meant for the mannequin or not, but we know it's meant for Douglas. And as you bring other characters are in from their T poses, you'll, you'll see those characters in here as well. So you got to make sure you pick the right character. And I did. This time I'm going to click import all. And it brings in both of those. So now I have three possible animations for Douglas. Let's do a little review from last week. We want to make a, uh, so the content folder here, we're going to make a folder called cinematics, just like last week. Going to go into that folder, cinematics, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add another level sequence. So this is just what we did last week, nothing new. I'll call it shot one again, just because. And I'm going to double click it so that it opens in the sequencer. Again, a little bit of review. I want to control Douglas just like we did with the mannequins. So I need to put Douglas in the sequencer here. So I'm going to drag Douglas into the sequencer. My animation options, when I click on plus animation, because when we imported those three animation cycles, we said apply it to Douglas. So now I have three animations I can use for Douglas. I'll start with a uh, dwarf walk and hit play. All right, so just like last week, we have an animation for Douglas. If I want him to dwarf walk longer, I'm gonna stretch that longer. Because it's an in-place animation, I would need to also animate his position, right? So I'll set a keyframe here. It'll take a few steps. So I'm going to move him here. Wow, that light got bright. Set a keyframe there. So hit play. And then now when I want him, when I want him, what I want him to do here is I want to start bust out into his hip hop move. So I'm going to add another animation of hip hop. Let's see if it's smooth enough. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, a pop, right? So last week we saw if you overlap those a little bit, that'll hopefully get rid of the pop. Good enough, good enough. So that, that hopefully is a review from last week. We've added a new character. We've added some animation for the character. And now we can animate the character in our scene. If you, if you need more light, you can add more light. You can move lighting around. That's not too much of our topic at the moment. All right, so he's doing his thing. The second part of our class, I want to talk about audio because what, you know, this is all a silent movie at the moment. So how do we add audio to our project? If you want to add voiceover, the first thing you need to do is be able to uh, record your voice. So I'm going to show a demo of that um, briefly um, in a tool that I use. It's free software. So you can do the same thing using your webcam. You can use a microphone. So um, I'll, I'll do that part now as a demo. Oh, 
sorry, I see there's a hand from April. Is that a real hand? Do you have a question, April? April, April? Um, no, I raised it from before because um, I didn't change the settings for importing, so it won't let me import, but um, now I got it, so Perfect. I don't have a question. All right. Sorry. No, 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 no worries. Sorry if I didn't see that for like three hours. I wasn't looking at the uh, at the hand thing, so good use of the hand. So how do we add audio? It's actually pretty easy to add it. Probably the hardest part is the, the part I'll show you is and it's not even that hard, it's how to get the software. So for me personally, I use just this free software called Audacity. And let me show you what it looks like. Uh, either you or your folks can download it for your computer. It's free. Let me load it here real quick. Um, it's a really simple, easy to use tool for recording your voice. Where is it? Oh, it's hiding behind my Zoom window. Ah, there we go. There we go. So it's this tool called Audacity. You can just go on the internet and find it. Um, Audacity. Um, Audacityteam.org. It's free, open source. You can download it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Hopefully, none of you are using Linux. Um, so yeah, it's just. Totally free software, super easy to use. Let me show you a little demo of how you use it. And then later, go ahead and download it and try this, but it's super easy. Uh, so what I'll do is show you, I have a microphone hooked up. You can see this separate from the microphone for the webcam. So I'm using this microphone. And if I click this button here, so I click that button to start monitoring, you can see my voice shows up when I talk, All right? So that way you're, you're making sure you're, uh, it's working. All you need to do is you hit the big record button, right? So I'm gonna hit the record button. Do, 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 I'm a walking, I'm walking. And now I'm dancing, now I'm dancing, I'm doing a little hip hop, doing a little hip hop, right? So that is what I hope is gonna line up decently with my recording. So then I just select and highlight what I want to record. I, this is where I said, okay, so I don't need that part. So selecting all that, I'm going to do a file, export. It, this is an important part. You, I don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. You want to export as a WAV file. So Unreal wants WAV files. So that's the most important thing of this. You can, you can, you don't have to use Audacity. You can use QuickTime if you have a Mac. You can use, I don't know, whatever file format you want to use or tool you want to use, but you have to export as a WAV file. And it, I'm going to put it in my music for me. I'm just putting in my music folder. I'm going to call it chatter and save it. And my set. Uh, whoops. Why can't I close? Uh, why is it? What's it? What's it? Do, 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 do. Why is it complaining to me? A pop up I'm missing somewhere. Oh. Weird. I don't know why it is. I'm assuming it's saved. Uh, let's double check, make sure it's saved. Music. What did I just call it? Chatter. Um, I did call it chatter. Where is it? Why is, it, why is it complaining to me? Too many windows up. Um, oh, it was hiding behind that Zoom window again. So um, it's asking me, do I want to add any metadata to my export? And I don't, so I just say, okay. There we go. And if I reload this, there's chatter as a WAV file. So. I made a WAV file now in my content browser. I need to import it. Everything has to be imported into Unreal before you can use it. So I'm going to go to my contents folder. I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to call it voiceover, voices, voiceover, whatever. I'm going to click and I'm going to import that chatter WAV file. And there it is. 
That was easy, right? Just drag and drop your wave file in there. Now to you, here's, here's the magical part. You go to your sequencer. We added Douglas in here. Now I want to add audio in here. How do I add audio? I just go to the green button, add a track of an audio track. So here's an audio track. I want to click on the plus audio button. It shows anything that I have access to. You'll say, where did all these come from? Remember there's that starter content. There's a lot of starter content uh, audio files. There's like explosions and fire and things like that. But I'm looking for this one here. I want my chatter file. It got put where my uh, playhead was. So I'm gonna slide it back here. Uh, where did I say I'm walking and dancing? And Well, I can, I can adjust it however I want. Oh, there it is. That's probably where I'm dancing. All right, so that's, I can adjust the timing. I may have made the timing a little off. So let's see what this sounds like. Where's play? Play's down here. Do, 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 do. I'm walking, I'm walking. And now I'm dancing, now I'm dancing. Oh, a little longer, right? So you can, um, you know, you, you probably may even want to, you know, I could have been recording you know, one thing, if you're really trying to time it perfectly, you would have your audacity ready, get ready to record it, hit record, then hit play, and then try to time it perfectly to what your character is doing. Do, 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 but, do. I'm walking, I'm walking, and now I'm dancing, now I'm dancing. Right, so I can also stretch okay. out. Remember, you can stretch this out farther. Um, add some more frames here. And now I'm dancing, now I'm dancing, do a little hip hop. Right, so uh, now you might say, well, that's fine, that's voices. What if I want some actual music? Uh, what do I do to get music in my scene? So that is another thing you can do for free. Let me show you where you can do that. If you go to, I have a site already ready that I use. Actually, my son uses this for his Lego stuff. Um, there is a website called freesound.org, which is just, uh, you need to sign up for it, uh, but then you can get some free files. So I went to this site and hit play to sample this. I just searched for dance, I hit play. Oh, we got some, got some good tunes going there. So then I already downloaded this. It's just a WAV file, also a WAV file. You hit download to download it. And let me show you what you do for that. You, similar to the voice, I need to import it first. So I'm going to go to my music file. That was called, oh, where did I import that? Um, wow, lots of files. Um, like I said, it's a good idea to kind of organize your stuff a little better. Is that this file here? No. Oh, here it is. Uh, I think it's this one here. Yep. So I downloaded this earlier just to save you all the time. But same thing to put it into my project. I just drag it in. It's asking, do I want to use the previous sound chatter as a template for what I'm bringing in? No, I don't. They're, they're unrelated. So I can just say no. So now I have another audio source here I can use in my sequence. I click the plus button to add another audio track. Uh, I'll show you, um, we want to do that a little click. Well, you can drag and drop. Let's just hit the button, see what happens. I'm going to select it. It puts it way down here where the playhead is. I'm going to go ahead and move it to start where he starts his hip hop dance and have nothing before then. So it's just kind of like all of a sudden music starts and he's dancing, right? So I'll go back to the beginning. Hit play. Do, 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 do. I'm walking, I'm walking. Now I'm dancing, now I'm dancing, doing hip hop. Right. Do, 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 do. Pretty cool, right? And then uh, if you need to change your audio levels, you can just right click. Uh, oh, actually, you could probably select it. Where can we play with it? Um, right click, and I get to levels here, edits. 
I'm actually not sure where you play with levels. Uh, let's see, let's hit the plus audio and add, oh, that's that. There it is, down here I can change. So you open up right here and hit audio, and you can adjust your volume here. If the, the music's a little too loud, you can adjust it and then. Now I'm walking, and now I'm dancing, and now I'm dancing, doing right. hip hop. So let your creativity take over because now you know how to get in any character from Mixamo. There's lots to choose from. Any animation from Mixamo and apply it to your character. Now you also know how to add voiceover and you know how to add any kind of audio source behind it. Uh, it doesn't have to be music, you know, that, that there's just sound effects you can do, you know, search sound uh, like crickets. I'm sure there's plenty of, uh, you know, ambient, wildlife, close recording of a cricket. Um, that what a cricket sounds like? Oh, don't need that. So freesound.com for sounds or music. Use Audacity to record your voice. Use Mixamo to get your characters and, and some animation. So what can you do now? Um, you could, uh, for a test, you could you know, set something up. If your machine's acting a little wacky, you could do it within this environment. Otherwise, you can go to the marketplace again and, and try and find an environment that won't crash your machine. Uh, maybe post to the, if anybody finds some ones that work well for them that doesn't seem to be too heavy, uh, you could post it in the, um, what's our chat tool called? Uh, it's called, I have it right here. Um, my brain's get a Slack, post it in Slack on an environment if you find that it, it's pretty useful to use. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is the hard part where I've shown you some ways to work. Now you just have to add your creativity and make something. I know that's a big jump of like, Ugh, what should I do? Um, if you really need an idea of what to do, just have two characters walk up to each other, say hi, and keep walking. I mean, something. Just come up with a tiny little story. and. Here's my advice, aim low, try and do something really easy first and then add another level. Don't try to do an animated feature, you know, like uh, uh, do, a, do a two hour movie. Don't do that. Just do an interaction between two characters so that you understand how to animate, how to add a voice, maybe throw a little music in the background and just be comfortable with doing a little thing and then doing a bigger thing is a lot easier. Once you know how to do a little thing, it's just adding a little more complexity. I'll be on Slack if you have questions or if you have additional like, yeah, but how do I do whatever? If there's something we didn't cover. Um, so I think we covered cameras, how to output last time. Remember you just add a camera. Here's the camera button. There's your camera. Then to output through the camera, you hit the little uh, render button. Um, so then, yeah, that's kind of, that's your next level of uh, stuff to do. I mean, that, I think there's, we'll, we'll see, maybe next Wednesday, we'll do like a little lab and see where everybody's at. But yeah, try to just have two characters interact with a little, some sort of vocal interaction. And then uh, if you can do that, you can do anything. I know it sounds crazy, but it is true. If you can at least do the basics then you can add more to the basics, it'll be amazing. All right. What do y'all think? Overwhelmed? Are you guys like, oh my goodness? Oh, I see some hands. Uh, Rashmita, you have a question. So, if you use a character from Mixamo, do you have to all also use the animations from Mixamo, or or could you use the animation that's already in the Unreal thing? Like the jump and the run and the walk. Yeah. You could try it. The the catch between the mannequin motion and the Mixamo motion is their bone structure slightly different. And there's actually a bone missing from the Mixamo characters that the mannequins have. So it's probably a better chance of success of, th there are ways to fix it, but that's actually kind of complicated. Um, I would try and just find it makes my has so many animations. You could probably find the exact same jump and walk cycle and those kind of things. So I, I would try to keep them matched. Okay. The workaround is, whew, it's hard for even 
professionals to figure out how to do it. It's tricky. Good question though. Uh, April, April, April. How do you say it? Uh, you, you just say it as April. Oh, okay, easy enough. Um, so how do you download the sound from Freesound again? Well, I think the key is you have to make an account with an email address. Let me double check. I, I logged in under my son's email. He already had one there. Um, let's see if I do a incognito and go to Freesound. Let's see what it looks like. Freesound.org. Um, yeah, it looks like you have to register to be able to download every, anything. So if you go register, make a username and put an email and a password, then you have access. So it's other than give them your email, uh, just tell them you don't want their junk email. Um, they'll send you like an ad once a week says, hey, there's new sounds, but you, know, you might be interested in that to know what they are. But, um, and then once you do that, then you'll have the ability to download uh, clips. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, who's that next? Um, oh, it's jumping around on me here. Wait, uh, looks like uh, Rakshi has a question. Maybe, I see a hand up. I see an unmuted microphone, but I don't hear anything. Rakshi. Yeah, Rashmita, do you have a question? Yeah, I have another question. Go ahead. Okay, so for the like the Audacity website to get the like the recording sound, do you have to register or log in or anything like that to use it? Uh, I don't think so. I think you just hit the download button and you get it. There's a lot of the uh, free free open source software is, um, yeah, it looks like you just click the button and it starts downloading and then you get it. I don't think I signed up for anything. I well, I just downloaded it a couple of days ago myself. So it's it's pretty handy. Who else has a question? Anybody? Priya Darshini. Um. So like last week while I was working with the Unreal Engine, I tried to download some animations from Mixamo, and it didn't go well with the animations that were given in the third person project. Um, is there a way we can merge those two? Because like, um, so like I had a running thing, but then once I uploaded an animation from Mixamo, the running, it just like the character just did in the T-pose for the entire duration of the run. And then it started doing the animation from Mixamo after that. Um... It could be, I'm just trying to think what it could have been. Um, pos like when you were looking in your um, sequencer, without seeing it in particular, um, where's my, so maybe if the, um, if you're, do you remember if your little walk, if, if the walk there was down at the end by chance, so it was just sitting there? It would kind of be one of those things I have to see your, um, I'd have to see your sequencer to see what it looks like. The, it is possible that when exporting an animation, it started with a T pose, but I think that's only for just one frame. Uh, was it animation for the same character that you had imported, or was it for the mannequin, or were you trying to assign it? It was for the mannequin. So that could be bumpy. So the Mixamo animations don't work well with the mannequins because there's a slight difference in skeletal structure. There's a workaround, but it requires, there's, it's like a huge tutorial. It's like a half hour tutorial of how to work around that. You gotta output the mannequin from Unreal, bring it into, bring it into Mixamo, then export it with a secondary character. It's a little clunky. So what I would do is skip the mannequins for the future. Like if you need to use animation from Mixamo, find a Mixamo character to use for it. Um, I think Mixamo does have a mannequin-like character, but it's not the same mannequin that's in Unreal. It's um, its own version of a mannequin. 
Unfortunately, it has the same name, so it's a little confusing. Let's see if it searches. Uh, yeah, mannequin. So this mannequin's not the same mannequin that's in Unreal, but it will work. Um, it doesn't look as cool, but uh, yeah, I would I would just from here ditch the mannequins in Unreal and just start using uh, characters from Mixamo if you want to use the Mixamo animations. It'll be much better. I see you. Thank you. Sure. Um, the last one was Rakshit Sitaraman. I see the mute goes away. It looks like he was talking earlier, but I didn't hear anything. So Rakshit, maybe double check your microphone. Darn computers. I'll put your question in the chat. If you... Oh, yeah, true. The audio is not working. It's supposed to be. Hold on. Let me double check. Am I supposed to be somewhere? Oh. oh. Yeah, we're in overtime. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Somebody sent me another chat. I was like, oh, I hope that's not the. Uh... Oh, okay. I see. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Well, yeah, maybe we'll wrap it up. Um, so, yeah, Jesse, if you're okay with it, we'll do another one next week, kind of like a QA lab. So, if people. Oh, the question just came up. Oh. How do you export MP4 from Unreal Engine? Export MP4. Oh, uh, like a video file. Uh, good point. Um, it natively, if it's a movie file, it just wants you. So you hit this little button here in your sequencer. If you have a camera, I added a camera by hitting the camera button. So you hit this little, maybe we'll go over that next week too, but um, maybe better, a little more detail on outputting. But a quick answer is you hit this little slate icon that pops up a output window to output a movie. It doesn't have MP4 by default, but it has AVI, uh, another type of movie file. So then you just say, I want an AVI. I do want audio. And then if you wanted the audio, and then you tell it where you want it to go. So here's the path that's gonna go into here. And then you just say, capture movie. And oh, it asks you, you wanna save a bunch of stuff. Yes, yeah, save that first. And then it's out. Do, 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 do. I'm a walking, I'm walking. Okay, that's me. And now I'm dancing, and now I'm dancing. Do a little hip hop. And then. Hip -hop. Right. Do a little hip hop. Do okay, okay. Do, 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 do. okay. I'm I'm tired of hearing my voice. There, I'll have to stop capturing. So then it goes to wherever you told it to go. And now there's an AVI file there that you can uh, play as a movie file. You can email to all your friends and upload to the Slack channel. Yeah. The quick answer there was. Add a camera and hit this little button here to render through the camera. But yeah, we'll, we'll if that was a little too quick, well, we can go over a little bit more of how to output stuff next week. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again, Jesse, so much. And uh, all of you, just you know, give it a try. Have fun with it. If you have any problem, just put it in a Slack. And uh, depending on what problems are happening, you know, we'll we'll talk about it next week. Uh, just maybe do the same time, same day. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those stay yeah. talk to one. Yeah, next week. Sounds good. All right. Good work, everybody. See you in a week and see you on Slack. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Have a good day.